If you're setting up a website for consultants or where people can book appointments, then Calendly is an amazing solution. It's been used worldwide by so many people, but a lot of them tend to go with Calendly 3. But if you want to start accepting payments for appointments or grouped events, then you got to go up for the pro version. It's easy to start thinking about, well, could I use WooCommerce or other products out there? Calendly is a really good way to do it. And the great thing is about the interface. So if you're creating a booking system for hairdressers, consultants, personal trainers, anything like that, this is the solution I would strongly recommend. Creating an account with Calendly couldn't be simpler. You just go into Calendly.com, go and create your account. By the way, this is not an affiliate or a sponsored video and Calendly have not asked me to do this. This is on the back of speaking to someone earlier where I thought a video might help them and a lot of you out there as well. What I'm gonna do is upgrade my account to a premium version. I'm currently on the free option. I've kind of been on it since 2020, to be honest. Now, here's where when you go to upgrade, you might be tempted to go for the $8 per month. I recommend you go for the 12 and here's why. Not only can you accept payments, but you can also enable like text notifications or reminders as well. But the big beauty is about the branding because the Calendly apps or the iframes that you will stick on your WordPress website, it says powered by Calendly in the top corner. And if you want to brand it to look better and work for you and your website or your clients, you definitely want to go with this. And I think the $4 difference is like a no brainer. Just upgrade for the $12 one. Once you're paid up, let's sort out some administration before we go and create our events that we're going to stick on our WordPress website. Go over to account and go to account settings. It's not a bad idea to upload an image and maybe a welcome message as well. You can also apply some branding as well. So maybe you want a particular logo to appear. And if you've paid for it, you might as well remove the Calendly branding as well. I mean, why would you want to leave that on? Set the link for your calendar, which makes sense to use either your name or a company name. Now, if you are going to enable notifications to go to clients, obviously it will kind of, you'll be paying for them in a way. So do think hard about this. You pop in a number here and the reminders will be sent via that route. That's all we need to do there. Now I'm going to go over to availability and then modify the dates and times of your availability to suit you. And you can enable the weekend as well if you so want. But what if you want to have different periods of availability on the same day? So let's change this Monday to be 10 to 11 a.m. We'll then hit the plus sign and we'll open up another new one from 12 till 1 and we'll hit plus again. And now I can go from 2 to 3 or maybe we'll go for 4 p.m. as well. So there's a lot of flexibility that you don't have to go, well, I, that's it, I'm available for seven hours and you kind of skip your lunch break. Make it work for you. And of course, you can completely disable a day as well. You can also hit copy and say copy all of those times to be Thursday and Friday. And they now move over. So again, make it work for you. And if you know there's particular dates where you're just not going to be available regardless, go and put a date override in. So I'm going to say on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, in fact, the entirety of this week, none of these times are available. That's it. I'm not available on those days. Full stop and hit apply. So that will now make mean that those dates I'm not there or I could go in and add in a date override for the 28th and say, well, I know I've said I'm available from say, not, in fact, I'm not available on Sunday. I know I've said I'm available from uh, 10 o'clock to four, but can we now change it to just be three till four like this and hit apply again? So you can block days out or time periods out, or you can override them and go, I am available on that day, but it'll only be for this little short window. Again, Pretty simple and easy, right? You will notice here it says zero event types because I've not actually applied this to anything at the moment. We are going to come back to create our event. I already had one on here that I was using for Calendly free. So I'm going to disable that for a moment and we're going to apply these times to a new event. The last thing I want to show you before we go there is you do have the ability to set up a new schedule. This is our standard work hours. We've gone and added in some overrides but I could have a completely different schedule and I could flick between the two of them. So I might have one which is morning hours only, another one which is afternoon hours only, and then another one which is morning or afternoon. And I could very easily just go into any one of them and go, right, uh, this one is not enabled on my custom meeting, but a new one is enabled. And then next month I might change my mind and go, I don't want to do any more meetings in the afternoon. I want to switch to morning only. That's fine. 
just go in and uh, remove the event or whatever it was from the new schedule and put it onto your old one. It's also important to have a look at the integrations tab. So if you have like other appointment booking systems, like maybe you get emails and people want to see you for whatever, make sure you go over to calendar and go and set that up as well. So I'm going to click on Google calendar, ensure that my calendar is added or you would click add calendar and account. So this is going to now mean that if someone books me say from three to four, it won't allow anyone else to book me for another event or it will say I'm unavailable or the other way around. Let's now get onto the juicy stuff, okay? Because this is really what a lot of you were coming for. I'm going to click new event type. I'm going to decide if it's a one-on-one -on -one or a group session. I'm going to go with a group one. I'm going to call it group. It will be a Google Meet call or a Zoom call or an in-person meeting. Let's just pretend it's an in-person meeting. We pop in a location, we click update. And obviously you're probably going to put more of a description down here with the address details, etc. The link for this is calendly.com web squadron backslash group. So this is quite important, but the great thing is that I can change it. So the name is group. The slug will be something completely different. We'll leave it as group for now. And how many people can attend? This is important because maybe you're selling tickets if it's a face-to-face -face event. And I might say the maximum is eight. And we'll say show the remaining spots. Is this going to have a color? go for whatever works for you. You might want to go with a branded color. Then hit next. How long is the event going to go for? Let's just go with 60 minutes. Or we could have gone and customized it. 53. Remember, we set up our scheduling. Well, that's now here. Working hours, because we only have one at the moment. So you can either set up custom hours or just use what you've got. And this is where get into a habit of setting up your working hours and then it saves you time with replicating. That means they can book onto this event anytime. Now, I feel like that's a bit of overkill right now. I'm saying, hey, 10 people, you can book on for 53 minutes and here's the availability. How about we add on a bit of breathing space before and after? You don't have to do that, but if you want, you can do. But what if we don't like the times and dates here? Let's just go back, set some custom hours up. I'm actually going to remove all of these and I'm going to say this event happens. It does happen every day, but we're going to just do one of them for now. I'm going to get rid of all of these times and I'm going to say 10 to 11, uh, 12 to 1, uh, and we'll go with uh, uh, 11, 12 to 1. Yeah, in fact, that's the same as what I had before. Why did I delete it? Anyway, we're going to go with that and I'm going to then duplicate it across all of these days except the weekend. So there we go. That is now our schedule for this particular event. The event is now created. However, we're not completely finished yet. If you click this link or even hit share, it's going to take you to this page where we have our logo, my face, the group, 53 minutes, London. If there was any other details typed in, they would have been here as well. And you can now see that I've currently got this set up for all of these times because I haven't, I, it's, it repeats. It's not like a one-off event, it just repeats all the time. And if you go into any one of these days, you can see the slots over there and you can see, well, basically the time zones and how many slots are available, but we can do a lot more. So back onto this page, we might want to ask some further questions. So name, email, we can add in further questions. We could even go in here, modify what we got. We can even just delete the question completely. So if there's anything you need to know prior to them coming, this is a great way to do it. What if you're setting up an event where you're going to help train children on how to ride a bike? You're a cycle trainer. You might want to go over here and say um, age of child. And then you decide on what you're going to have. Are you going to have multiple lines? Are you going to have like a checkbox? Are you going to have like drop down? And then you go and put in your various answers and they pick one. So you can make this. Let me just get rid of this. You can make this really bespoke to what the what's the purpose of what you're trying to serve here. You're a personal trainer, you, you know, are you here to do aerobics, weight training? You know, what, what are you after? Workflow option. This is where you can now start to decide on when, I mean, obviously when someone books anything, they're going to get an email, right? And you'll get an email as well. If you want to now start to set up email reminders and all of that, you can do that as well. So if we go, we click get started with workflow, you can use these as part of the package that you've paid, the pro version. So you might even say, we're going to do an email reminder to the uh, to the invitee. So we're going to click that and we're going to say send this 24 hours before, two days before, three days before, whatever you want to go for. I hope everything we've done so far is actually relatively quite simple because it isn't that difficult. If you hit home, you'll see all of your events. You click into it, you get to the settings bit. So we've modified our question. We've set up a workflow. You can see it there if ever you want to just remind yourself what you did. 
You can decide on like um, the types of emails they're going to get. So you can personalize all of these as well. So, you know, what is what's it going to say? I mean, sometimes it's easier not to change those too much. Just leave them as they are. Um, are you going to do email reminders? Again, personalize that. Are you going to do a follow up? Personalize that if you want. I'm just going to tone them off at the moment. Text reminders. Remember, you got to put in your number. But if you've done that again, that's OK. Confirmation page. Quite a cool one because you could, if you want, after they confirm, send them to your website. So once they've done this, they you maybe want them to go elsewhere. You know, often though, if this is done like within your website, like an iframe you've embedded, and I'll show you that, they're going to be on there anyway. So you might not need to worry about that and just leave it as a Calendly confirmation page. But if you send them a link via email and then they go through this process to complete, you might want to redirect them elsewhere. But that's entirely up to you. And then we have collect payments. Now, this is obviously going to be quite important. So you're going to have to obviously go to your integrations page and select your providers. Let's go and do it really, really quickly. We're over into integration and I can pick between Stripe or PayPal. I'm going to go with PayPal. I'm going to say connect. And once you go through the necessary steps of just connecting your account, you just say, yep, yeah, we're going to enable it. Now, one thing I do want to point out, you do need to have a business PayPal account. So if you're using a personal one, it ain't going to work. You'll get asked to convert your personal account into a business one. So have a think about that. I always strongly recommend that if you're using WooCommerce or any other solutions like this, you should have a business account set up. It doesn't take that long to do, but if you haven't started it, start the process now. Now when we go back to collect payments, the option will be available for me to collect. This is now where we can set our price. Now in case anyone comes over here and decides to buy anything, I'm going to go set this up as a ridiculous price just to put everybody off because this is not a real one, okay? I'm just setting this up for all of you just to show you how it works. So if anyone wants to book, you get £1,000. I don't mind if there's, there's, there's 10 slots. Come, in, come, come ahead, you can do that. So now if I view my link for the page, so let's go over to Monday. Now, at the time of recording, it's about 2.25 in the afternoon. So notice how all of the earlier slots have disappeared. So you can only go 3 p.m. So let's go and click it. Let's hit next. It's now going to say, give us your details. And then I get pay with PayPal. So they would obviously pay it and then it would go through as a transaction. But what if I don't want to share them the link? I want it to be visible on my WordPress page. Well, let's do that. You go and hit share. You either have the link or you can go to add to website. And this is one of the favorite ways to do it. You go for inline embed. You can do some branding if you want at this point as well. So I'm just going to go and change the colors ever so slightly to something like that. I'm now going to pick up this code or copy code even is probably quicker and easier. Go over to a website. I'm going to drop in a HTML widget like this. And then into that, I'm going to drop this code in. And what you will now get is that you can stylize it to look how you want. You know, remember, this is just an iframe widget. Um, basically, that will now be visible on your website. But we're not done yet. A lot of these events, they're kind of indefinite, right? Um, how long can you start booking in for them? Now, I want to show you, though, one very key difference. If I go into this group one at the moment, you can start booking to attend this event anytime in the future anytime you want. So you could book it in say 2025 and you know, what if I'm not here or something like that? A little bit risky, right? You might also want to say you can only book it up to 60 days in advance or maybe only up to two weeks in advance because every two weeks I like to readjust and see, well, what is my availability? Well, maybe I'll say you can only book for a particular day. So let's go for this Friday here, the 26th and that's it. That's the only date you can book for. So if I now hit save and close, it's only available on the 26th. There the slots available and that's the time. Well, that's the date. Look, it doesn't matter how much further you go in the future, there's no other dates available for you. Because I've gone and restricted it to just be for that particular date. But if you were to say 14 days into the future, and you can see that here after I go and refresh that page where I dropped in the widget. If you're offering free calendar booking options, just go for the free option. If you want a little bit more where you can start to accept payments before anyone's allowed to attend. And by the way, this was a face to face. You can set up with group, uh, Google uh, meetings, Zoom, all of that as well. It's really, really good. Remember, this is not a sponsored or an affiliated video. This is just someone who was probing the question about using this. And I feel like the video is going to help quite a lot of people out. 
I'm Imran Web Squadron. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.